section 49 of the promulgation of universal peace volume 1 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by k hand the promulgation of universal peace volume 1 by abdul baha abbas discourses of abdul baha delivered in montclair and west englewood june twenty third nineteen twelve at montclair new jersey notes by frank e osborne abdul baha you are always smiling mr osborne surely our faces should reflect happiness in this presence abdul baha yes this is the day of baha ullah the age of the blessed perfection the cycle of the greatest name if you do not smile now for what time will you await and what greater happiness could you expect this is the springtime of manifestation the vernal shower has descended from the cloud of divine mercy the life-giving breeze of the holy spirit is wafting the perfume of blossoms from field and meadow rises a fragrant breath of thanksgiving like pure incense ascending to the throne of god the world has become a new world souls are quickened spirits renewed refreshed truly it is a time for happiness to people coming in welcome welcome you are very welcome the church bells begin to ring it was not feeling very well this morning or i would have gone to church everywhere we hear the call of the spiritual world in everything we behold the works of god the church bells are pealing in memory of his holiness jesus christ although more than nineteen hundred years have passed since he lived upon the earth this is through the power of the spirit no material power could do this yet the people in their blindness deny christ seeking to perpetuate their names in worldly deeds everyone wishes to be remembered through earthly and material accomplishments one will hardly be remembered nine years while the memory and glory of christ continue after nineteen hundred have passed for his name is eternal and his glory everlasting therefore man should hear with attentive ear the call of the spiritual world seeking first the kingdom of god and its perfections this is eternal life this is everlasting remembrance how great the difference between the glory of christ and the glory of an earthly conqueror it is related by historians that napoleon bonaparte the first embarked secretly by night from egypt his destination was france during his campaign in palestine revolution had broken out and grave difficulties had arisen in the home government christian worship had been forbidden by the revolutionists the priests of christianity had fled in terror france had become atheistic anarchy prevailed the ship sailed out into a night brilliant with the lights of the moon napoleon was pacing up and down the deck his officers were sitting together talking one of them spoke of the similarity between Bonaparte and Christ. Napoleon stopped and said grimly, Do you think I am going back to France to establish religion? His Holiness Jesus Christ established the religion of God through love. His sovereignty is everlasting. Napoleon overthrew governments in war and bloodshed. His dominion passed away. He himself was dethroned. Bonaparte destroyed human life. Christ was a savior. Bonaparte controlled the physical bodies of men. Christ was a conqueror of human hearts. None of the prophets of God were famous men, but they were unique in spiritual power. Love is the eternal sovereignty. Love is the divine power. By it all the kings of earth are overthrown and conquered. What evidence of this could be greater than the accomplishment of Baha'u'llah? He appeared in the east and was exiled. He was sent to the prison of Akka in Palestine. Two powerful despotic kings arose against him. During his exile and imprisonment, he wrote tablets of authority to the kings and rulers of the world, announcing his spiritual sovereignty, establishing the religion of God, upraising the heavenly banners of the cause of God. One of these tablets was sent to Napoleon III, Emperor of France. He received it with contempt and cast it behind his back. Baha'u'llah addressed a second tablet to him containing these words, Hadst thou spoken truly concerning the wronging of the servants of God during the Crimean War? thou wouldst not have cast the book of god behind thy back when it was sent unto thee verily we tested thee therewith and did not find thee in the state thou didst pretend arise and make reparation the world shall perish in what thou hast but the kingdom remains to god because of what thou hast done affairs shall be changed in thy kingdom empire shall depart from thy hands as a punishment for thy action thou shalt find thyself in manifest loss thy glory shall pass away unless thou takest hold of this firm rope we have seen humiliation hastening after thee all this happened just as announced by baha'u'llah napoleon the third was dethroned and exiled 
his empire passed away and became non-existent while the dominion and sovereignty of baha'u'llah the prisoner has become eternal through the confirmation of god this is as evident as the light of the sun at midday except to those who are spiritually blind if we are afflicted with a cold we cannot inhale the delicate fragrances emanating from the rose garden of the divine kingdom in brief the nations of the world are becoming united under the sovereignty of the divine kingdom the east and the west are embracing here in love and affection today this is not a commercial or political unity but unity through the love of god we have crossed the sea to spread that love in america to announce the call of the kingdom to establish the spiritual foundations of international peace although men may rise against the kingdom the dominion and sovereignty of god will be set up it is an eternal kingdom a divine sovereignty in his day christ was called satan beelzebub but hear the bells now ringing for him he was the word of god and not satan they mocked him led him through the city upon a donkey crowned him with thorns spat upon his blessed face and crucified him but he is now with god and in god because he was the word and not satan fifty years ago no one would touch the christian bible in persia baha'u'llah came and asked why they said it is not the word of god he said you must read it with the understanding of its meanings not as those who merely recite its words now baha'is all over the east read the bible and understand its spiritual teaching baha'u'llah spread the cause of christ and opened the books of the christians and jews he removed the barriers of names he proved that all the divine prophets taught the same reality and that to deny one is to deny the others for all are in perfect oneness with god in london some of the christians said we were deniers of christ we say his holiness the christ is the word of god we are gathered here this morning for his mention the bells have called us together in love and unity the house is the temple of god all are welcome very welcome question how shall we determine the truth or error of certain biblical interpretation as for instance the higher criticism and other present-day christian teachings abdul baha your question is an abstruse and important one complete answer to it would require a long time i will reply to it briefly the only true explainer of the book of god is the holy spirit for no two minds are alike no two can comprehend alike no two can speak alike that is to say from the mere human standpoint of interpretation there could be neither truth nor agreement question do you approve of the new thought in which the control of mind over matter is the central principle abdul baha philosophy develops the mind christ and the word of god are revealed through the spirit plato says the mental conclusions are so and so christ says be led of the spirit question should children be allowed to read the higher criticism abdul baha they should first be taught the reality of religion as a foundation for instance in the catholic church the child is taught that through some act of the priest the bread and the wine of the sacrament become the flesh and blood of jesus christ the mind cannot accept this the child must be taught that this transformation is symbolical of the truth that christ is the food from heaven the eating of which produces eternal life the jews had memorized the bible but failed to grasp its meanings if they had understood the spiritual significances of the scriptures they would have been the first believers in christ you are among the first believers in this country you are the children of the kingdom baha'u'llah has taught you the reality of religion there are many of the baha'i friends in persia whom we do not know but we know you here in america turn your faces to the sun of reality that sun has always risen in the east find the answer to your question in your heart be as little children until the soil is prepared it cannot receive the benefit of planting end of section forty nine